What's up guys, welcome back to the FNG Academy. Buck here, former Green Beret, here to help you guys get some Whoa, I haven't done that intro in a hot minute want to jump back on here and do some more talking heads um, and put out some more knowledge, tips, advice uh, for you guys trying to get selected for special operations. I know it seems like it's been a while since we've done this, but we've actually just shifted the advice uh, portion of what we do now to the Patreon. Um, but we're going to start bringing them back to the main channel as well. So if you want more content like this and you're interested in becoming special operations, um, go check out our Patreon. If you just want to support the channel, go check out the Patreon. We really appreciate it. Uh, it helps fund, you know, getting across the country to film constantly um, and keep these videos coming. So if you enjoy this stuff, guys, do us a favor. Please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Um, all that stuff really counts. All the comments you guys leave, uh, it matters. It really pushes these videos and helps us with the reach. Um, so we can keep, keep doing them and keep them coming. So in this video, I want to talk about the most important thing, in my opinion, for special operations selection. If you're getting ready to go to SFAS, what's the most important thing? Kind of a two part. There's a, a physical aspect and a mental aspect. And today we're going to kind of talk about the phys physical aspect and what you really need to be training up for and something that's not like really natural. And that's rucking. Um, obviously, you guys know that during the, the course of the Special Forces Qualification course and selection itself, you're going to spend a lot of time under ruck. Um, and time under a weighted ruck is hard to get the body used to. So there's so many aspects about rucking that's really important to start practicing now and getting good at it and really experiencing what it's like to be under a rucksack uh, with weight for a really long time. But that being said, it's easy to just be like, oh, you got to get good at rucking. But that doesn't really help you guys when it comes to like, well, what numbers, how far, how fast, uh, what kind of rucking plan should I be following? So I want to jump on and kind of give you more of that information. So you, at least you have a grasp of what being good at rucking looks like. And also some don'ts, right? There's a lot of misconceptions out there about rucking and how much weight you should have. Um, for example, when we developed our ruck trainer, we did so because we needed a tool that could help us train with the platform used in SFAS and used in uh, across the Army, which is the Molly 2 rucksack. It doesn't, it's not going to help if you're using a different ruck than you're going to use in selection because then you're not getting used to how the shoulder straps feel, how to set it up for your body, how to adjust the waistband, how to use your load lifter straps uh, properly. So we knew that we needed the same platform that you're going to be using in selection, but we also wanted the weight to be perfectly positioned between your shoulder blades um, and then prevent injury and just have a better all-around training experience with the ruck trainer. So we developed that. But when we were developing, we were getting a lot of questions like, oh, can I ruck 90 pounds in this thing? Can I ruck 80 pounds? I, I'm doing 75. I need to be doing 75, 80 pounds. And just these astronomical numbers that people were throwing at us that they wanted to go out and ruck. And it's like, um, don't do that. Like, there's no reason that you guys should be putting so much weight on your backs. It's bad for your body to have 80, 90 pounds. Do you do, you do that in the uh, Q course? Yes, but also in a controlled environment. The cadre know what they're doing. They're not trying to just break you, right? Because then they're not going to get the operators that they need. So they do add an immense amount of weight, but they do short movements with that weight. Um, and those movements just feel really long because the weight is like so crippling and it's so demoralizing to have that much weight on your back. It's really not healthy. It's important in the Q course because it's weeding out the people that just can't handle mentally um, the pain that comes with walking around with that much weight on your back and learning how to push through it. And special operations is all about finding people that are willing to push through their discomfort um, and worry about the team before their own, you know, pain and suffering. So the whole point of that in that phase is to test your mental strength and your ability to push through. You shouldn't be training with 80, 90 pounds on, um, compressing your spine, causing damage to your knees, uh, your joints are going to be aching like crazy. Your traps are going to hurt. Uh, it's miserable. So 
I don't recommend it. So what weight should you guys be training at? And this is another reason that we developed a rock trainer. It's a tra change out those weights quickly and easily. So that way you're doing a more varied uh, workout routine. You should be varying your weights and your distances anywhere from 15, 20 pounds all the way up to about, in my opinion, 45, 55 max. I think the best training weight for your heavy days is 45 pounds with water. So the system that I like to use when I'm out rucking now, and I wish I had the, I wish I had the ruck trainer when I was training. I really did. I'm not just saying that to try and sell it guys. I really wish I had it because it's just so comfortable. Um, and it makes rucking fun instead of doing what I did, which was pre-military. I packed a backpack full of rocks, uh, and ran around with it while the rocks were just slapping me in the back, which was terrible. Uh, and it felt horrible. I didn't know the difference between a backpack and a rucksack. I just didn't. I didn't know anything about the military. I just knew that they did hard things and I wanted to be a hard person. Um, so that's what I did. The ease of changing out the weights is so that you're getting out there and you're starting low and you're working your, your way up to 45. Um, but that's what I was saying about water. So what we did is we have the, the rigid molly panel and then the two quart canteen, same ones you use in selection with the canteen straw. Um, and it just makes it really convenient. So if you do a 45 pound weight with that two quart canteen full of water, that's an amazing, uh, heavy day. So if you're doing five, 10, even 15 miles, um, in your training with a 45 plus water, that's a good, good day of rucking. You're getting your spine used to it. You're getting your traps used to it. You're learning how to adjust your weight. Um, you're, you're figuring out when to apply load to your hips and then apply load to your shoulders, when to share that load evenly. You're also learning how to use your boots, which boots are going to be best for you, um, where your blisters form, how, which kind of socks you prefer. All of that stuff you should be going into selection already knowing and having worked out in your training. So if you're going to ask me the most important aspect of training up for SFAS is by far, in my opinion, rucking. You need to be rucking because you're going to get your equipment sorted during your ruck training process. You're going to get time under tension, time under that load, hours and hours logged in of time under a rucksack, which is going to make it so when you put that thing on in selection, it's not, you're not getting sharp pains in your traps. You're used to it. Um, the aches and pains that you do get, you already have worked through before. So you know that they go away as soon as the ruck comes off. Um, mentally, you've known that you've hit certain mile markers. That's another huge aspect of it is when you're training, you need to hit certain mile points so you could check those off your list. So do you want to hit a 20 mile ruck? I think you do. I don't think the weight is that important though. I think it's a mental check. I don't think you need to do it all the time either. I think hitting a good flat, even, um, 20 mile ruck with, depending on what your training schedule is like hitting a good 20 mile ruck with even 25 pounds on your back and water is a good way to hit that mental check, knowing that you've done 20 miles in the past. So that way, when you go out to SFAS and you have a long push or you have, um, the trek which is an undisclosed distance, but is typically over 20 miles, you already know that you've hit that distance. It may not be at the same weight, but you've hit it. You've hit it mentally. You've been there. You've actually done it. And mentally now you've overcome that hurdle of what 20 miles actually feels like when you get out there and do it. Because 20 miles is enough time under that ruck to where you start to get in your own head. You start to think negative thoughts, um, the pain creeps in, and then you start to second guess yourself. So there's a lot of mental, um, you know, rise and falls that happen when you're doing these distance rucks. It's a lot of time spent with you and your thoughts. And that could be really bad situation if you're starting to take a negative turn uh, mentally when you're in something like SFAS. So the more you could pre-test that going into SFAS, the better chance you have. So my advice to you guys, I've been getting this a lot. I'm especially trying to go through my Instagram and get these um, messages that have been sitting there for a long time. I really apologize that I, I don't get back to you guys a lot of times. My Instagram is just slammed with uh, messages that, that just come and come and I'm trying to like get in and answer them, but they come faster than I can answer them. 
um, which is a good problem to have. I appreciate you guys. I just, I really want to respond. So I'm trying to work through and answer those. But it just made me realize like how many of you guys are still wanting more information because this is your dream and you want to go out and achieve that dream. Um, and I owe it to you guys and, and Kurt owes it to you guys to put that information out and make sure that you're staying motivated, but also educated and aware so that you have the best chance possible at getting selected. Because we want to get more guys and girls into SFAS and get more people selected. Um, so that way SF stays a strong and powerful unit and our country is protected by the best of the best. So my last advice to you on this video is start working on your rucks and think about mental checkpoints that you want to hit. Don't worry about the weight so much. I really don't think you should focus too much on weight. I think that you should hit certain distance goals uh, in order to have those checked off in your head. So you should set a goal for five miles, depending on how your training is, before you leave for SFAS, you should have hit a five mile, a 10 mile, a 15 mile, and a 20 mile ruck. You don't have to hit them multiple times. The 20 mile, you don't have to do a bunch of 20 miles, but you should have at least done one 20 mile ruck. Um, and it could be with 25 pounds in water. It could be with 15 pounds in water, just some kind of weight on your back and hitting those distances to overcome it mentally and to see what it's like and to get your body used to traveling at long distances, get your mind used to the monotony of tromping away for so many hours and the discomfort setting in and how you're going to practice overcoming that discomfort and overcoming those mental hurdles when they come. So that's all stuff that you're pre-planning. And then while you're out there doing that 20 mile ruck, that's a really good one to work out your boots, what you do and do not like about your boots, uh, which we're working on the FNG Academy boot, which is gonna be a wide toe box. Um, so that way you don't have these narrow boots that they like to make. I don't understand it. None of our feet are shaped like this, but they make all the boots like this. And then your pinky toes are on fire by the time you get to the end of it. What kind of socks you like to wear? Do you double up your socks? Do you use, um, moleskin like I did on your weak points. Find where you get blisters and attack those before they happen. Uh, a lot of you guys have some really different, you know, and interesting regiments when it comes to uh, blister control. So put those down in the comments because they could help other people out when they're, when they're reading these. But set these goals for yourself and make sure you're hitting them in your rucks and stop worrying about the weight. Like don't you don't need to be rucking some crazy 65, 70 pounds uh, over long, long distances. I'm telling you guys, it's not necessary. I hope that helps, guys. Go check out the FNGacademy.com. Uh, you'll see the mentor spot at the top. If you guys want to support the channel, go check out Patreon. Really appreciate it. Um, and the Ruck Trainer, we have all kinds of uh, equipment that we're putting on the Ruck Trainer to help you guys have enough, you know, molly attachments for everything you need. Go check out the Ruck Trainer, FNGacademy.com. I'll see you guys later.